In the past, it was believed that the modern human race descended from a human ancestor, between 300,000 and 200,000 years ago. However, the exclusion of some living populations from the anatomically modern morphological classification was a problem. Because of this, a cladistic definition of Homo sapiens has been proposed, according to which the term would, by definition, refer to the modern human lineage that resulted from the division from the Neanderthal lineage. According to a cladistic definition, Homo sapiens have been around for more than 500,000 years. An alternative definition of Homo sapiens includes the lineage of modern humans, since we diverged from the Neanderthals between 500,000 and 800,000 years ago. However, around 744,000 years ago, when combined with numerous early admixture events, and Denisovans diverging from Neanderthals 300 generations after their split from Homo sapiens, is the estimated time of the divergence between archaic Homo sapiens and ancestors of Neanderthals and Denisovans, which was caused by a genetic bottleneck of the latter. The terms early modern human and anatomically modern human are used to distinguish between Homo sapiens, the only living hominin species, and extinct archaic human species. Homo sapiens is anatomically consistent with the range of phenotypes seen in contemporary humans. This distinction is particularly important for eras and areas where anatomically modern and prehistoric humans coexisted, such as the Paleolithic period in Europe. The beginning 130,000 years ago of the African megadroughts is regarded as a significant dispersal event. Prior to this early modern age of discovery, some subpopulations of Homo sapiens had been isolated for tens of thousands of years, following the population of Africa around 130,000 years ago, and the recent expansion back out of Africa around 70,000 to 50,000 years ago. This has led to significant genetic variation when combined with archaic admixture, some of which has been shown to be the result of directional selection over the past 15,000 years, for example. Much later than potential archaic admixture events. What's more, numerous early modern human discoveries, such as those of Omo and Herto from Ethiopia and Skul and Kafseh from Israel, show a blend of ancient and contemporary characteristics. Skul 5, for instance, has a projecting face and pronounced brow ridges. The brain case, in contrast, is quite rounded, distinct from that of Neanderthals, and resembles that of modern humans. It is unclear whether some early modern humans, like Skul 5, retained their more robust traits from earlier populations or were mixed ancestry individuals. The Skulkafse hominins, also known as early modern humans, are fossilized hominins that were found in the Israeli caves of Skul and Kafse. As some of the earliest members of their species in Eurasia, they are now categorized as Homo sapiens. Remarkably, Skul 5's burial had a wild boar's mandible on its chest. The prominent supraorbital ridges and protruding jaw are visible in the skull, but the modern human brain case is rounded. When it was first discovered, it was thought to be an advanced Neanderthal, but it is now widely believed to be an early modern human, albeit a very robust one. The body of a teenager, roughly 13 years old, was also discovered in Kafseh in a pit dug into the bedrock. A large red deer's antlers were clasped to the chest in the hands of the skeleton, which was lying on its back with its legs bent to the side and both hands placed on either side of the neck. In order to distinguish anatomically modern Homo sapiens from archaic humans like Neanderthals and Middle, and lower Paleolithic hominins with transitional features intermediate between Homo erectus, Neanderthals, and archaic Homo sapiens, the term anatomically modern humans is used with varying scope depending on context. The time period between the first appearance of Homo sapiens and the time period thought by some to mark the appearance of full behavioral modernity, roughly 50,000 years ago, which corresponds to the beginning of the Upper Paleolithic, is referred to as the Middle Paleolithic. Since then, it has been more practical to divide subtypes into early or robust and post-glacial or gracile categories. It is believed that gracile humans emerged as a result of a process that started between 50,000 and 30,000 years ago and led to a smaller, finer bone skeleton. Modern humans tend to be more gracile or lighter built than the more robust, archaic humans. However, modern humans display remarkable robustness and high variability in many physiological traits. The physiology of Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans can still be reliably distinguished by a few physiological details. Increased cooperation and resource transport have been linked to the gracile, 
or light-built skeleton of anatomically modern humans. Furthermore, there is proof that the prefrontal cortex in particular, which is characteristic of the human brain, developed as a result of an exceptional acceleration of metabolome evolution, paralleled by a drastic reduction in muscle strength. Along with the distinct cognitive abilities of humans and their low muscle performance, the observed rapid metabolic changes in the brain and muscle may be a result of parallel mechanisms in human evolution. The occipital bun, a prominent neck bulge that Neanderthals' neck muscles were attached to, is absent from modern human skulls. Simply put, Neanderthals needed more energy than more gracile modern humans, who could use that extra energy for greater brain power, because Neanderthals had enormous muscles to support their enormous skeletons and skulls. The forebrain of modern humans, even the earliest ones, is typically larger than that of archaic people, allowing the brain to be located above rather than behind the eyes. This will typically result in a higher forehead and a smaller brow ridge, though not always. Modern humans may have evolved between 350,000 and 260,000 years ago, through a merger of populations in East and South Africa, according to recent research that used 260 CT scans, to determine the virtual skull shape of the last common ancestor to modern humans. Some North African fossils may also represent a population that introgressed into Neanderthals. Africa has long been believed to be the origin of all human life, but recent research shows that early modern humans may have actually originated in Arabia, where they flourished and evolved. Arabia was not just a stopover for travelers leaving Africa. The lush past of Arabia is more than just a random fact, it suggests that the area was once inhabited. Archaeologists have started searching for indications of human occupation as a result of this realization. Recently, archaeologists have uncovered countless locations where these hominins once resided, dating back hundreds of thousands of years. It appears that when hominins migrated from Africa into the rest of the world, Arabia wasn't just a brief stopover. They stayed there for extended periods of time. In fact, many researchers now agree that Arabia should be considered a part of Greater Africa, and that the peninsula was crucial to the spread of humanity throughout the world. Nearly nothing was known about hominins in Arabia until very recently. We faced a situation that was very simple. Anthropologists believed modern humans simply power walked into Europe, Asia, and other continents after stopping in Arabia, because was merely near the exit from Africa. Some even claimed that Arabia had no prehistory. Due to these presumptions, little was known about hominins in Arabia until recently. Hominins existed in Arabia 500,000 years ago, and modern humans were most likely not present there at that time. Although many other hominins were present in Eurasia at the time, the Neanderthals are the most likely culprits. At least in the northern regions of Arabia, we can be fairly certain that Neanderthals lived there. In the Levant, the area to the north of Arabia that includes contemporary Israel, Neanderthal remains have been discovered. In Arabia, there are stone tools that resemble those discovered at Neanderthal fossil bearing sites. However, the earliest Arabians were probably not just modern humans and Neanderthals. Many people believe that the area was somewhat of a melting pot, with different groups coming and going as the climate changed from wet to dry. Anthropologists predict that we will be discovering a wide range of potentially distinct hominin species, nearly all of which are likely to have interbred. What does this mean for the evolution of humans? Two questions are crucial, how did modern humans use Arabia once they started leaving Africa, and what part did Arabia play in Homo sapiens prehistoric evolution? One theory holds that the Red Sea, formerly known as the Sea of Reeds, because it was more like an inland sea, was the actual Garden of Eden. For humans to develop a more gracile body as they caught fish rather than stabbing powerful predators for their food, this watery Garden of Eden would have been ideal. In fact, given that it is still practiced there, it is possible that the bow and arrow was created with the intention of aiding in fishing. In comparison to early Homo sapiens, technological and cultural advancement in recent millennia appears to have been much faster. There may be more people around to think of innovations thanks to a vastly increased population, increased communication and idea sharing among human populations, and the accumulation of thinking tools. It's also possible that humans perceive the rate of advancement as always being relatively faster than it actually is because they are unaware of earlier developments. To assume that modern humans killed or forcibly relocated Neanderthal men, however, would be erroneous. 
There is no conclusive evidence in the archaeological record of a violent outburst during this time. Instead, it's possible that the high status of modern human male immigrants, due to their advanced technology, was associated with better reproductive outcomes. The social status would have been passed down to their male descendants, who would also have experienced much greater reproductive success. The key might have been a system that prioritized modern human male dominance and inheritance. The patterns would be amplified further in a patrilineal and possibly patriarchal social structure, because perhaps only the firstborn son would inherit the clan's assets while the other sons would try to found their own clans, further dispersing their lineages across new lands.